Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Monster Hunter World has taken over the... the world. The fifth main installment in the series has blown people away with its sweeping ecosystems, tough but rewarding combat, and oh my god, is that mountain alive? Yes, there's a lot to love in Monster Hunter World, but front and center are the giant monsters. These things are huge colossal. Bigger than a medium drink at an American fast food restaurant. It's going to take you all the skill, timing, and nerve you have to take just one of these things down, or you better get that SOS flare ready. Monster Hunter World is a fanciful world. Ugh, I keep doing that. So of course it's easy to just get lost in the moment and enjoy the battle. But as you're scaling a cliff to jump on a monster's back to get a good stab at its neck, you have to wonder, how did these things get so huge? And is there an upper limit to their size? It turns out when scaling up an animal, not all dimensions go up at the same rate. If you were to take your pet iguana Fluffy and scale him up to the size of a great Jagras, he would have a hard time supporting himself. That's because of what's called the square cube law, which states that when an object's dimensions are increased by a certain ratio, its surface area goes up by the square of that ratio, while its volume shoots up by the cube of that ratio. Put more simply, as an object gets bigger, its volume grows faster than its surface area. If you took a cube that was one meter long, on all sides, it would have the surface area of 6 square meters and a volume of 1 cubic meter. So its surface area to volume ratio would be 6 to 1. Double its sides to 2 meters long and the area of the new cube would be 24 square meters, while the volume would jump to 8 cubic meters. And the new ratio is only 3 to 1. Lengthen the sides again to 3 meters and the ratio drops again to 2 to 1 and so on and so forth. The thing about living organisms is, we're full of stuff. We're absolutely packed with bones and organs, so as we get bigger and our volume goes up, we get much heavier. Because our surface area increases more slowly than our volume, it becomes harder for our bones and muscles to support the increased weight, even though they're getting bigger and stronger too. There is a workaround though. Animals whose bones don't have to hold them up can grow very large. At 27 meters long and 171 metric tons, the blue whale is the largest animal ever, thanks in part to the ocean supporting its weight and keeping the strain off its skeleton. But if it grew legs and tried to walk around like a geratodus, it wouldn't get very far. For land animals or monsters, there's an upper size limit. The largest animal walking the earth today is the African bush elephant, and the largest ever recorded was almost 4 meters at the shoulder and tipped the scales at 11 metric tons. It's possible ancient elephants grew even larger, up to 5 meters and 22 metric tons. That would make them the biggest mammals ever, but there's something holding us mammals back from even greater girth. We milk drinkers are endothermic, meaning our bodies try and maintain a specific temperature. This helps us stay active and thrive in colder environments. But keeping up the heat means burning energy, and using more energy means we need more food. Land mammals likely topped out around 20 tons because it would take insane amounts of food to keep them going. African elephants cover as much as 80 miles a day looking for sustenance. This is why animals that are found on islands tend to be smaller than their continental cousins, like the now extinct dwarf elephant. There's just not enough area to grow the amount of food needed to sustain larger animals. Putting enormous animals on an island is a recipe for death. Unless some new huge food source regularly came to the island, all the largest creatures in Monster Hunter would die pretty quickly. Animals could grow larger if they were cold-blooded, like reptiles, which might explain why, with the exception of the Palamu, which looks like a bat that swallowed a grapefruit, all the largest monsters look reptilian. Warm-blooded animals use about 10 times the energy cold-blooded animals do, mostly to maintain that body temperature. So theoretically, the same amount of food could support a cold-blooded animal 10 times the size of a warm-blooded one. There's still a lot of debate about whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded, but one piece of evidence supporting the latter is how huge they got. The largest ever found, the Patago Titan Mayorum, was about 80 tons, roughly 10 times the weight of today's African elephants. It'd be best for an animal this size to be cold-blooded too, because because some speculate a warm-blooded animal this big would cook itself from the inside out. Remember that surface area to volume ratio from before? That number is also important for an animal's body heat. A lot of surface area helps an animal exchange heat with its environment, while larger animals trap heat better. It's possible for reptiles like the leatherback sea turtle to get so big that it stays warm even if it's technically cold-blooded. I don't think they could ever get so big that their body heat turns rocks into magma, but I'll suspend disbelief for you, Monster Hunter. Add up all these factors and it looks like the upper limit for a land animal is about 90 metric tons, or about the weight of 30 mid-sized cars. At least, that's the limit here on Earth. 
On a planet with lower gravity, it'd be easier for a monster's bones and muscles to support it. It would also make it easier to wield, say, a giant impractical battle club slash horn. And a different atmosphere composition could help monsters grow larger too. In the time of the dinosaurs, there was up to five times more CO2 in the atmosphere, making the planet warm from pole to pole. These conditions would be beneficial to cold-blooded animals and sustain them as they grew and evolved. More carbon dioxide would also aid plant growth, providing the large amounts of food big herbivores would need. Monster Hunter World does a really good job of thinking through the details of its world, shoot. And by comparing the listed sizes of its monsters to the largest land dinosaurs we found, it appears that a prehistoric Earth could have supported almost all the creatures in Monster Hunter. Unfortunately, the laws of physics and our planet's gravity rule out the very biggest of these leviathans. But Monster Hunter's whole deal is how mysterious the backstory is, and it never explicitly says it's on Earth, now does it? Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before going out to hunt more monsters. Speaking of monsters, there are some truly terrifying ones here on Earth, but they usually live under the sea. Ever wonder why deep sea life looks so strange? Then check out our Subnautica video here. And don't forget to keep on playing.